Come on, let's clap unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Come on, there's a liberty in this house. And I believe where the Spirit of the Lord is, anything can happen. My God. Somebody, if you came here for a breakthrough, tonight you're going to leave with a breakthrough. Now hear me, some of you have been fighting, but tonight we win. You've been fighting the same old, same old, uh, being dragged down by the same old thing. But tonight, we win. Come on, let's clap for Jesus, everybody. Hallelujah. But tonight I feel in agreement and alignment with what God is doing. I feel like God has already given us a little taste. But I believe now He wants to give a little bit of direction. Because we're going to break into some, into some things, some breakthrough moments. I believe that. But what are we breaking free from? And where are we going to? Because we can just break, three, break free from the chains but not know where to go from there. Because we've never been here before. That's why he instructed Joshua when they were going into the promised land. He, t- he said, take the ark of the covenant. And he said, put it out in front of you and give it three-fourths of a mile, 2,000 steps in between you and it. In other words, you've got to give God room to work. But the reason why you need it in front of you is because 40 years they had it in the midst of them. Because they they didn't need it out in front leading them because they knew where they were going before they even got there. It was in the midst. It was in a defensive position where they were protecting the ark. From what? But when he went to the promised land, he said, take the ark of the covenant and put it out in front because we've not been this way before. So I feel a mandate in the Holy Ghost to release something into this sanctuary and to the people of God. That He doesn't only want you to break free from what was, but He wants to instruct you and lead you into what will be. Is that all right? All right. All right. Jesus' name. So good to be back again. What a move of God we had this morning. Thank you for your response to the Word and to the moving of God's Spirit. Amen. But if you have your Bibles, turn quickly. Give honor to Bishop Wright, Mother Wright, David Wright, Pastor Wright. Amen. And Sister Angie Wright. Amen. Give honor to all the leadership and that just don't talk the talk, but they walk the walk. It looks like when they... They got down with it, started worshiping. Amen. I appreciate Brother Stu Mott, his wife Leanne. Amen. I had a good time with them. What a couple. She got a tiger by the tail. Genesis chapter 12. Consider it an honor to be here. Genesis 12 and verse 1, the Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from 
thy father's house. Somebody say, my father's house. Unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. Somebody say, "Uh uh-oh. Genesis chapter 13, verse 5. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents, and the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together. For their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle, and the Canaanites and the Perizzites dwelled then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen. For we be brethren, is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou would go to the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. What he was saying, he said, if you're going to root for the redskins, I'm going to go to the ravens. I just wanted to stir you up a little bit. But if you go to the right, I'll go to the left. But then if you skip down to verses 14. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him. Say, after that. We're going to have an after that moment tonight. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him. Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward for all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it. Bump your neighbor say you've got to see it. For all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. One more verse in Romans Chapter 8, verse 15, probably a familiar verse of Scripture. Romans 8 and 15 says it like this. For God has not given us a spirit of, a spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Tonight, I want to preach about that spirit of adoption with this thought. Breaking free from my Father's house. So one more time, will you lift your hands, your heads, and your voices. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come asking your anointing. We come asking, oh God, that you would quicken our minds to the mind of the Spirit in this house. Asking that you would quicken our minds, our ears, our hearts to receive. Oh God, quicken my tongue to speak as an oracle of the Lord. And I pray, oh God, that you would release the gift of faith. Mingled with the ministry of the word, oh God. In a way like never before to receive what we have to receive in this house. And we bind every spirit of our Father's house that would try to come. Lord, we rebuke and we bind, oh God, any generational curses that would hold us hostage. And I pray, oh God, that there would be a breakthrough tonight like never before. And everybody said in Jesus' name. And you may be seated if you so desire. Many times Old Testament people and places become perfect pictures of New Testament principles and practices. 
Because in Hebrews 10, it says it that it says that the law, the law is a shadow of good things to come, but not the very image. He says in one version, it says that it is a rude rendering of what will be. A rough draft, an outline. It's literally in Galatians 3 and 24, it says the law is the schoolmaster that points us the way to Christ. So you've got to understand many times the Old Testament people and places are pictures of New Testament principles and practices. A rough draft of what will be. An outline, a shadow of good things to come. And with that being said, I am acquainted and you are acquainted with this concept of the spirit of adoption. That the spirit that God has given us to freely receive was likened unto the spirit of adoption. Adoption being a process. That spirit of adoption, if you go to the Old Testament, you can find out that Abraham becomes that rough draft in that outline and shadow of that picture of that spirit of adoption to give us an understanding of what it means to receive that spirit of adoption. Because in Genesis 12, the call of God goes to Abram, goes out to Abram. That same spirit of adoption that has reached out to us that we have received, reached out to Abram and called him by name. And the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. That implies, Abram, you've never seen it. That implies you've never been there. But if you by faith will leave what you know, what you're familiar with, your country, your kindred, and your father's house, I will take you somewhere you have never been. I will show you things that you have never seen. But with understanding this call, there are three dimensions to this call. That's country, kindred, father's house. Just like what we consider and Paul considered to be the gospel. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says, I declared unto you the gospel wherein you have received and now stand that Christ died and was buried and rose again the third day. He declared that the gospel, just like the call of Abraham, Abraham being the rough draft of good things to come, you can see the picture of the gospel being painted in the call of Abraham. The three dimensions of the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Watch now that we identify with Jesus' death through repentance. And we identify with his burial in baptism in Romans 6 and 4. But then we identify with his resurrection through receiving the power of the Holy Ghost uh, through the spirit of adoption. But you have to understand this is giving us a picture, painting it for us very plainly. That it is, you can leave your country, that's like repentance. You can leave your kindred, that's like baptism. And you could, but you must leave your father's house, that's like the spirit of adoption. Because watch this now. The Bible said to leave these three things, but we identify with his death through repentance. We identify with his burial through baptism and through his resurrection through the power of the Holy Ghost. But you've got to understand these three dimensions are four different things. Because repentance is for the act of sin. You ask forgiveness because of the sins committed. You confess the sins committed. And you ask forgiveness for the very act of sin. You repent for the act of sin. But for baptism, baptism, like leaving your country and your, now your kindred, baptism, it breaks you free from your relation to sin and your ties to sin. So you can be repented for the act of sin. You can be baptized to break free from your ties and your relation to sin. But there is still one more level. And it is the Holy Ghost which is for that sin nature that is inherited from your father Adam. Right. 
So you see the call of Abram. He said, you can leave your country, you must leave your country, your kindred, and your father's house. But here is the thing. You can leave your country, your kindred, but your father's house is a dressing that ingrained, that inherited nature that you gained from Adam. And he said, you must leave your country, your kindred, and your father's house. But your father's house It's deeper than just the act of sin. It's deeper than just the relationship or the tie to what you've done. But your father's house is altogether deeper because look at the, look at the call of Abraham. It's, it's actually inverted. It's not, it's not the natural progression of departing from a physical location. That would have been leave your father's house, your kindred, and your country. But the call is inverted. And it says to leave your country, your kindred, and your father's house. That don't make sense unless you understand. He was not asking Abraham to leave a physical location. But he was asking him to take a journey by faith to be delivered from things not only known and what's familiar to him because your father's house it's your nature it's what's ingrained in you your father's house it shapes the way that you look at this life let me say it like this your country and your kindred that could be everything you know and are familiar with But your father's house is altogether different. Because why the country and kindred might be how, or or what you know and what you're familiar with. But your father's house is how you think. It's deeper. Your father's house, what's ingrained in you, it, it, it shapes the way you deal with relationships. It shapes the way and paints the picture of how you perceive love, whether right or wrong. It shapes the way that you cope and deal. It's deeper than just something that you repent for and that you get broken free from. Because you can leave your country and your kindred. But your father's house is deeper. It's inherited. Your father's house shapes the way, not just what you know. It doesn't just shape what you know. It shapes the way that you think and the way you do things, the way you you deal with relationships and the way that you handle correction, the way that you handle uh, the, the, the struggles and the fiery trials of this life, the way that you look at love, the way that you give love, receive love. It's all wrapped up in that ingrained nature of your father's house. House. It's all everything deeper than just what you know and what you're familiar with. Because your father's house, here's the thing. The Bible said, so Abram departed by faith and began to go on that journey and begin to walk with God. But there's a problem. The Bible said, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. He did exactly what God asked him to do. But there's a problem because the Bible says, as the Lord had spoken unto him, but Lot went with him. You want to know what Lot was? Lot was his relationship to his father's house that went with him. See, you can repent and be baptized and you can break free from what you've always known and what's always been familiar. But the thing about your father's house that when you begin to walk in faith, you may leave what you know and what you're familiar with, but your father's house goes with you when you go. The way you think, the way you deal with relationships, it goes with you. Because Lot went with him, it tagged along with him as he began to leave the land that he grew up in and the kindred that influenced his life. But his father's house was so much deeper than just what he knew. It it was the way that he thought. 
His father's house became the lens in which he would look at people. It became the lens in which he would look at crisis. It became the lens in which he would look at love and look at marriage. It became the lens in which he would look at right and wrong. But his father's house, when he broke free from his country and his kindred, it was his father's house that kept coming along with him. And the Bible said, and Lot went with him. And it came to a point that the Bible says in Genesis 13 and 5, And Lot also which went Abraham with Abraham had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. For their substance was great so that they could not dwell together. They got out into the land that God said that he would show them. But they were fighting amongst themselves. And this is what we are fighting and pressing up against is our nature it's our father's house what came with you from where you came from and where what came with you from where you came from is keeping you from going where God said that he would take you it's your father's house that puts a leash around your neck and you can run full speed away from your country your kindred but your father's house it's what ties you to what was so that you cannot get where God said that he would take you your father's house lot Abraham come to the understanding The land's not big enough for the both of us. I can't get where I'm going when I'm holding on to where I've been. I can't see what God's trying to show me when all I can think about is what I've seen. I got, oh God, somebody help me right now. It's your father. Let me help you right here. Let me say this, because it goes on to say, and there was strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. Here's the battle that we're fighting. You can be walking, listen, you can be walking in faith, but still be fighting with your father's house. I'm going to bust somebody's bubble. Your boss is not your problem. Your spouse is not your problem. The thing that's wrecking your marriage and causing you to fight amongst one another and even divisions in the church at times. It's not your boss. It's not your spouse. It's your father's house. It's the way you look at life. The way you deal with situations. The way that you handle relationships. The way you have a work ethic. It's all looked at through the lens of your father's house. But Abram had to come to understand that this land that God said that he give me it's not big enough for the both of us oh come on somebody clap your hands where we're going we can't take our father's house with us because we all can be walking in faith as Abraham was He was out of his country and his kindred. Walking by faith but still fighting with fear. Because fear is the predominant motivating factor of a father's house. That's what they inherited from Adam. Because Adam when he ate of the fruit the first thing that he felt it was not shame but it was fear. He said I hid myself because I was afraid. Fear is a predominant motivating factor because our Father's house is everything we know. But not only everything we know, it's the way that we think. But in that land, he came to the understanding the land is not big enough for the both of us. And he said, let us not fight. Lot Lot was his nephew, but he called him his brethren because he was addressing the fact that he was raised in the same Father's house. The way that he would look at life. The way that he would 
he would receive love and give love was all based on his father's house but now he's walking in faith he's doing what God has asked him to do he's lifted his hands he's walked around the sanctuary he's declared by faith he's did everything that God asked him to do but there's one problem why he's been obedient and he submitted to the will of God it was his father's house that still went with him he still saw, thought the same He still looked at love the same. But here's the thing. As long as Lot is there, as long as his father's house is present, he cannot see what God said that he would show him. So Abram said unto Lot, let there be no strife. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of doing what God has asked me, but me still not seeing what God said that he would show me. I've done everything that he's asked me to do. I'm where he asked me to be, but I still cannot see. I'm still not where he asked me to be because... I pray thee between me and thee, between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. He says, Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. And if thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. That, that bugs me that Abram said that. I mean, it's a nice gesture. But the problem is, God promised him all the land. But your father's house will cause you to settle for less than what God promised that he would give to you. He said, you go to the left, I'll go to the right. No, I'm not settling to let my father's house determine my decisions. But I know that God promised me and what he promised me, he will provide. I'm not going to allow what was to determine what will be. If he promised Promise me all the land. I'm not going to settle allowing my father's house to decide where I end up. But now, the reason why Abraham said, let there be no strife, I'm tired of fighting. Fighting with my father's house. Tired of fighting with my nature. That's ingrained in me. That ingrained nature that causes me to think love is something that it's not. But You want to know what was so powerful about this whole thing? Where's, where's Jalen? Come here. You look good. He's tucking in. Make sure everything's squared away. Abram, leave your country. Abram, leave your kindred. But then God says, now, now that you've left all that, leave your father's house. This is the hardest part. Because it's so ingrained in you, you don't even realize that it's your father's house. You just think it's who you are. You just think it's what you struggle with. You just think it's your faults, your insecurities. But no, you've got to understand there's a father's house that's tied around your ankles and you're dragging it like a ball and chain. But you want to understand why Lot couldn't see what God said that he would show him? Because Lot, his name actually means something. His name actually means a veil. I have not used this. I got it back there in that fancy little room they got. I got one of those snuck it in my pocket. I'll leave it here with y'all. Man. That's what Lot was to Abraham. And as long as his father's house was there, he was veiled. He was where God asked him to be, but he could not see what God said that he would show him. And I'm telling you, as long as you're fighting with your father's house, you may be walking with faith, but still fighting your father's house. It's not a church problem. It's not a marriage problem. No, it's a father's house problem. Because guess what? You may be exactly where God wants you to be, but you can't see what God's wanting you to see because you are veiled by what was. Therefore, you can't see what God said that He would show you. 
It's not that you don't have promises. It's not that there's not prophecies that you've been given by the dozens. That's not it. You've got the prophecies. You've got the promises. But the only reason you're not seeing what God said that he would show you is because we are veiled by our Father's house. See, you are where God wants you to be. The reason why you can't see people that love you, the reason why you can't see God wanting to use you is because your Father's house. It's kind of like when Jesus came along. I haven't forgot, I haven't forgot you, okay? You got to remember, He's under the veil. But remember when Jesus came along, he came as the spirit of adoption personified. And he took that Israel nation, Israelite nation. He came alongside the Jewish people that loved God. And he said, let me take you somewhere that you've never been. And he tried to lead them away from their country and their kindred. But you know what he, they did? Every time Jesus would say, you've heard it said, but I say unto you. They would say, but our father Abraham. Every time Jesus tried to show them a love that they'd never seen and a side of the Father that had never been manifest before, trying to take them somewhere they'd never been, He begins to lead them over. Oh, oh, so slightly He begins to try to lead them. But they kept pointing back to what was, what they'd always known, what had shaped their thoughts. They kept pointing back to, what about Abraham? What about Moses? And that's why it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, bring that up, the scripture I gave to you, verse, I don't, I don't know, whatever, 1, 14, 4, I don't know. 14, there it is. But their minds were blinded. For unto this day remaineth the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. See, what the Old Testament was supposed to be, remember? It was supposed to be a rough draft of things to come. The Old Testament was pointing to Christ. You want to know what the Amplified Version says? The Amplified Version says like this in Galatians 3 and 24. Let me just pull this out real quick. Galatians 3 and 24 in the Amplified Version. It says it like this. So that the law served to us Jews as our trainer, our guardian, our guide to Christ to lead us until Christ came. The Old Testament was supposed to point to Christ. That we might be justified, declared righteous, put into right standing with God by and through faith. But verse 25 says... But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a trainer, the guardian of our childhood. Your father's house. The Old Testament was back there pointing forward to the new. But now that they're entering into the new, they kept pointing to the old. And now that's why it says in 2 Corinthians 3 and 14, pull it back up. Look at Jalen. He's like looking like he's got a veil on. Can you see? But their minds were, don't answer, but their minds were blinded. For unto this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. Next verse. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Because even though the spirit of adoption was present, they were pointing back to their father's house. And now that veil is upon their heart. Next verse. Nevertheless, when it shall, when it shall, uh, when it shall turn to the Lord. I want to preach a message sometime called Tag, you're it. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Next verse. Now the Spirit, now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
Next verse, keep going. But we all with open face uh, behold as in a glass the glory of the Lord uh, are changed into the same image uh, from glory uh, to glory uh, even by the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, it's got to be open face. Uh, somebody quit pointing backward. Start pointing Because uh, that's when the veil is removed. Uh, and that's when we're going to see uh, glory uh, to glory. Oh, come on. Somebody clap your hands and shout yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Because when the veil is removed, you can see him for who he really is. Because your father's house becomes the lens in which you look through to see God. And as long as you're looking through a veil, you'll not see him for what he really is in his fullness. But when that veil is removed, that's what we were bumping up against. And even Brother Mott said to some gentleman, I feel like our nose is on the veil. And that's exactly right. Our nose is on the he said but when they turned to Christ that spirit of adoption the veil was torn away from their heart and with open open face that's why the Bible says in Genesis 13 and 14 after Abram made the decision we can't do this anymore. We can't get out of our country and kindred and get out where we're supposed to be and start going back to our Father's house. You've been here before. And God's wanting to do something new. But the thing that is keeping us from seeing the prophecies come to pass is a veil. And that's why Abram made up in his mind that night. He said, the land is not big enough for the both of us. You've got to leave. We cannot do this anymore. And that's when the Bible says in Genesis 13 and 14, bring that up. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that, Lot was separated from him. Lift up now thine eyes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before you start looking for the promises, you've got to separate from Lot. And that's why it says, And the Lord said unto Abram, After that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes. Because when Lot was separated from him, that's when the veil came off. And God said, Lift up now thine eyes. And from the place where thou art, because you're exactly where you're, you're supposed to be, He said, From the place where thou art, look northward, southward, eastward, and westward. Next verse. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it into thy seed forever. And what I feel like God is wanting to do is somebody to make up their mind that I'm not going to be dominated by what was and what's been my ingrained nature. But there is a spirit of adoption that says after that, after that, and when that veil is rent, you've got to look north south. Southeast, it's all yours. The only requirement you've got to see it. Oh, glory to God! Hallelujah! And I'm telling you what God told to me. He said when that spirit of adoption is released, the veil is going to be lifted. And right where you are, standing flat-footed, exactly in the same place that you've been these last couple months, you're going to start to look north, south, east, west. North, give up. South, hold not back. East, West, and whatever you can see with your mind's eye, it's yours.
Listen. Her name, her name was Lorna. Little Lorna, she used to get up early on Sundays and she'd put on the only dress that she owned. And little Lorna would skip down to the church down the street because that was her only escape from her father's house. Because in her father's house, all she knew was abuse. All she knew was a father that was a drunk and a mother the same. And many times, little Lorna, she, she would watch her own father beat her mother until she become unconscious. This was the norm. This is what shaped her. But Sunday mornings was her escape from her father's house. She would go down to the little church down the street and she would watch them dance. She would watch them worship. But every Sunday she'd have to make her way back home after service. But one Sunday she went home from that service and she she went back to her father's house and she sat at the kitchen table. Began to eat lunch, but after a little while at the kitchen table, somebody knocked on the door. It just so happened to be the church. They would like to invite or invite, give an invitation to her, her father and mother and the rest of the family, her three brothers, or two brothers and one sister. So they knocked on the door, and the father answered in a drunken stupor. He said, we don't want what you have. He said, I'm an atheist. The mother piped up in the background and said, you're not an atheist. You're nothing but a drunk. And they proceeded in the doorway to begin to fist fight in front of the church. Little Lorna, red-faced, is so embarrassed. But then they finally slammed the door in the church's face. And, and something in Lorna's heart slammed shut that day too. And she made a vow. I will never be embarrassed and ashamed like that again. And little Lorna never went back as a little girl. But as she began to grow up, she got out of her father's house, got a job. But the thing is, she tried to get away from her father's house, but it went with her. She married a man that was an alcoholic and abusive as well. And she lost him in, the, in her marriage. He died to alcohol-related uh, alcohol issues. But then, marrying another man, She'd already had kids, but the kids now had begun to grow up and they began to follow the same patterns. Living in, in the same father's house, this same, uh, this same generational curse being passed on. Her own children are now beginning to be alcoholics and become verbally abusive to her. She marries another man and he's, he's an alcoholic as well. She can't break free. Little Lorna. She's grown up now, her own kids. And she doesn't know what to do. So she decides, maybe I'll open that door one more time. And for three months, she goes to a little apostolic church down the road. And after three months, she decides that she'll take her son. And she takes her son, and as, as they both go, the, the son begins to weep and cry in the very service that he, the first service that he came to. And they both went to the altar. They both received the Holy Ghost. They both were baptized in Jesus' name. But there was a problem. Because after every service, little Lorna and her step, or little Lorna and her son would have to go back home and every Sunday when they got home they would receive a call from the bar down the street that would say come come pick up your husband he's drunk again he's bleeding he's fallen down the stairs again many times they'd receive the call come he's he's all over he's gone the bathroom all over himself and he smells like you've got to come get him and they would go up to the bar and that stepson would have to go into the bar and pick up his own stepfather and carry him to a car. They would go home and he'd have to carry his own stepfather into the house. How embarrassing that is for a young man when the, the, the neighborhood is watching, friends are on looking and they're watching him carry his own stepfather into the house because he's bloody and drunk. 
Every Sunday they went through this. How do you live victorious? Carrying the weight of a father's house. Isn't it ironic that little Lorna said, I'll never be ashamed again. I'll never be embarrassed again. But yet every Sunday. But one day she made up in her mind. We're not going to do this anymore. I got to face my father's house. So that day when the call came, her and her son go up to the bar. And once again, he's bloodied. Once again, he soiled himself. Once again, that stepson picks his own stepfather up, carries him to the car. But when they get home, Lorna says, No, don't take him to the bedroom. Sit him at the kitchen table. And Lorna was wanting to go back to where it all started. She said, sit him at the kitchen table. And sitting across the table from that that husband and from that stepfather, Lorna did what only she knew to do. She had to muster up all the faith that she could muster. And all she could do to face her father's house is sing so she began to sing a simple little song you might know it Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me little ones to him belong they are weak but he Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible. And as Lorna began to sing just that simple song, it may be simple to you, but it took all the faith in her world. And as she began to sing, her step or her son began to sing as well. And joining in, when they began to sing that simple song in faith, the spirit of adoption came into that kitchen right where they were. And that spirit of adoption grabbed a hold of Lorna. And it grabbed a hold of her son. But then it reached across the table. And it grabbed a hold of that husband. And that husband began to cry. And he began to weep. And he began to say things like this. God, I'm sorry that I've been ashamed. I've been so embarrassing to my family. God, I'm so sorry that I've I've lived my life this way. And I've done this and hurt my family. I'm sorry. And in his repentance, tears streaming down his face. He lifted his hands. And at that kitchen table where Lorna was willing to face her father's house, that spirit of adoption got a hold of her, her son, and that father. And God filled him with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And he began to speak with other tongues. But the reason why I told you this story is because I know Lorna I know her very well because Lorna is my mother and I was that son and I remember those phone calls and I remember carrying him I was there when she sat at the table I was there when she began to sing. And I was there when I began to join with her. It took all of our faith. And I was there when that spirit of adoption came. And you know what you just felt? You know what just grabbed a hold of your heart? It was the same spirit of adoption calling to you. Saying, leave your country. Yes, leave your kindred. But Antioch, it's time to leave your father's house. 
So young man, young lady, God's calling you out of your chair and He's calling you to an altar where you can say, God, break any generational curse. Come on right now. Everyone has a father's house. Come on, let God lead you. It's time for you to face your father's house. That's when the veil lifts. That's when the veil lifts, when you'll be honest. When you'll be honest saying, I can't fight anymore with my father's house. Come on, please don't stay where you are. Please, God's saying, please don't stay where you are. Please answer the call. The Spirit of God is asking you, please don't leave or stay the same. Come on, somebody pray, God, deal with who I am. Deal with where I've come from. That's it. Let your voice out. There's some young men that are dealing with their father's house. There's some young ladies. The reason why you don't feel like you're valuable, it's because of your father's house. Come on like Lorna. Come on like little Lorna. In the name of Jesus. So there is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, if you need to bow your knee at an altar and say, God, I need you to break me free. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every I'm not going to live in fear anymore. I'm not going to live in fear anymore. I bind that spirit of fear and I lose a revelation of the Father's love. There is power in the name of Jesus. So there is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, you don't have to do this alone. You don't have to do this alone. You're not all by yourself. Come on, somebody's breaking free right now. Somebody, the veil, the veil is about to tear. Ministry, come on, release ministry right now. I release ministry to minister. I release that spirit of adoption. I release that spirit of adoption right now to lead you where you've never been, to show you what you've never seen. Oh God, lift the veil. Oh God, lift the veil. Oh God, lift the veil.
Come on, if you feel a release, I want you to find somebody, begin to pray with them that the veil would be lifted on their life. Come on, let them know you're not alone. You're not alone. We're going together. We're going together.
fear, deliverance from anxiety. to turn around if you're up front I want you to turn around and I want you to find somebody that they don't have to pray alone let them know you're not alone we're gonna pray together because we're not going where God's got for us to go alone if you have to make your way through the pews you just find somebody I'm not afraid anymore I'm not afraid to go where he's leading I'm not afraid to pray what he asked me to pray to do what he asked me to do come on be bold be bold like Lorna be bold like little Lorna come on pray in faith pray in faith in Jesus name deliverance we're not going to be the same words of knowledge right now in the spirit as you're beginning to pray you're beginning to feel things I pray the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom right now I release the gift of faith come on ministry we're going where we've never been we're about to see things that we've never seen but God said that he would show us So step beyond that veil right now. Step beyond that veil. Don't wait for next Sunday. Don't wait for tomorrow. God's asking you to step out by faith right now. To look at somebody. And God's going to give you the discerning of spirits. Uh, and you're going to begin to pray. If they're not breaking. If they're not breaking like you think they, they need to break. I want you to pray for a word of knowledge. Uh, pray for a word of wisdom so that you can pray in alignment with God. Come on, body. Body, begin to minister to the body. That's it. Come on, we've got people praying all the way to the back, all the way side to side, because this is, this is it. After that, after that, after that, after that, after that, lift up your eyes. After that, lift up your eyes. After that, lift up your eyes. And everything you see, if you can see it, it's yours. I see my body healed. I see my children saved. I see it. I see it by faith. 
Listen, I feel there's somebody in here needs a miracle right now. But I'm going to pray something, not, not, not for your body, but I'm going to pray something because many times spiritual problems manifest themselves in physical ways. I seen one young lady get a miracle. She had something wrong with her stomach that she couldn't eat. But when we prayed against the spirit of fear and anxiety, God did a miracle in her body. So right now, if you need a miracle in your body, I want you to lift your hands to heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray against that spirit of fear and anxiety that is manifest in a spiritual or a physical way in the bodies of your people, oh God. And I bind that spirit of fear and I command it to leave that body now in Jesus' name. You feel that right now? You feel that right now in Jesus' name. Come on, just let your voice out right now. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, it just shifted right now. I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, all over this house. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost right now. Receive ye the Holy Ghost right now. Receive that spirit of adoption. Receive that spirit of adoption. come on open your spirit right now I feel God is going to impart right now the Holy Ghost not just as a comforter but that Holy Ghost is going to be that spirit of adoption leading you where you've never been open your spirit here it comes Antioch That you're going to go places you've never been, see things that you've never seen. 
I release that spirit of adoption in its fullest measure. I release that spirit of adoption in its fullest measure right now in Jesus' name. Every young man, you feel like you have a call on your life, lift your hands. I pray that spirit of adoption with the gift of faith right now in Jesus' name. Every young lady, you're feeling pulled in a certain direction. I want you to receive that spirit of adoption to lead you onto that college campus, into that high school, to your friends, to your family. I release that spirit of adoption right now. Come on, speak it out. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know that we've already had one receive the Holy Ghost this evening. I believe we've got one that's being refilled as well. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God is still moving in this place. We're not going to interrupt that flow, but if you would, as you are leaving, please remember your tithe and offering. We've got ushers at uh, each door, so we're going to take an offering, allow you to worship the Lord in your giving as you're leaving, but uh, we are not going to dismiss this. This is rich, rich, rich. In the name of Jesus, ha <laughs> ha. In the name of Jesus. That's it, Jalen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. While we're in this vein of prayer, also, would you join with me if you're not praying? for yourself right now and pray for uh, Stephen and Megan Dem Dennis's baby. It's, uh, Joshua is very sick, gotten a couple of texts this evening. So would you pray with me for this, this baby, this child, in the name of Jesus. I believe that God is a healer. In the name of Jesus, Father, you see this child. We lift this child up to you, God. God, we plead the witness and the authority of the blood that flowed from the stripes that were placed upon your back for our healing. God, we plead that blood over this baby right now. In the name of Jesus, God, we believe that not just every symptom would go away, but Father, we believe that the very thing that is causing those symptoms would be healed. We believe for wholeness in this baby. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> in the name of Jesus.
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Harandolo lo kosia la la mondo lo lo kunda la la mananas. Hallelujah. Ah, my, my. Church, I just feel like there's a, there's a second wave rolling in this place right now. Could you just close your eyes? Let's just do it like church is over. You're dismissed. But if you're wanting more, just close your eyes and lift your hands right now. And let God move through this place and move through you. In the name of Jesus. God, we open the secret places of our heart to you tonight. God, we unveil the hidden places of our heart tonight to you. We trust you that you are a good father. Hallelujah. Brandon, Joni, Brother Middleton just said that the Holy Ghost is going to move on y'all. Won't you stand to your feet right now? In the name of Jesus. You've left home. You've left a state and this night leave your father's house Woo. Ha. in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus brother and sister Prasad help me right now pray with him ha in the name of Jesus I declare liberty the freedom to never look at things like they've looked at them in the past the freedom to never speak about things like they've spoke about them in the past Renew this mind. In the name of Jesus, renovate it, restore it, make it new, make it fresh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, Nathan. Break free tonight. Come on, Nathan. Break free tonight. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, I proclaim freedom. 
Paralala monda la makia Irur maya ya moso ya kanda ayanos Hallelujah Here's that wave. Ha. Ramondo la la manda ki ando lo lo ko shata la la manas. Samantha, it's not just Nathan that's going to break free tonight, but it's you. In the name of Jesus. Come on, Sam. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father, we proclaim liberty and freedom. Come on, Sam. Come on, Sam. In the name of Jesus. Sam, just take two steps forward physically right now and break free. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ha. Yerandala la munda katiat. 